Let's stay on the same subject. Ms. Slotkin just said there'll be about 1,000 U.S. service members operating a peer system off of Gaza. How many of them will have guns, Mr. Secretary? Well, typically all of the uh, deployed service, member carry, uh, service members carry guns, and they have the ability to protect themselves if, if challenged. So if someone from land in Gaza shoots at our service members who are on the $320 million pier that we're building, you're telling me our service members can shoot back? They, they, have the, they have the right to, uh, to return fire to protect themselves. Now, Well, now do we again, think that's like, so now I want to move to the likelihood that you think someone from land in Gaza might shoot at our service members on this pier. Do you think that that's a likely scenario? That's possible, yes. This is a very telling moment, Mr. Secretary, because you've said something that's quite possible that could happen, right? Shots from Gaza on our service members, and then the response, our armed service members shooting live fire into Gaza. That is a possible outcome here so that we can become the port authority and run this pier, right? Uh, that, that, that's correct. You know, I, I expect that we will always Don't have the ability to protect ourselves. Don't you think that counts as boots on the ground? President Biden told the country that we weren't going to have boots on the ground in Gaza. And we and, won't. Okay, but you guys parse the distinction between, like when Americans think boots on the ground, they think Americans in harm's way or engaged actively in a conflict. You guys seem to be sort of um, saying that boots on a pier connected to the ground connected to service members shooting into Gaza doesn't count as boots on the ground? It, it does not. <laughs> uh, I think you're going to find the, the American people have a different perspective on that. And if we're going to have people shooting into Gaza, we probably should have a vote on that pursuant to our war powers. But I want to bring us now closer to home and the F-35 program. Is the F-35 program a failure? No. It's, uh, okay, so let's go over how much does an F-35 cost? Well, it depends on the variant. but uh, 100 million? Safe, safe to say, 100 million a copy. Okay, so we just had the Air Force in here, and I said, what percentage of these F-35s are fully mission capable? And they said 29%. Do you have any basis to disagree with that assessment? I don't have any basis to disagree okay. with the Secretary. So at 100 million a copy, 29% being fully mission capable, does that seem low to you? It's a complex uh, airframe, and, and again, um, there are a number of reasons why a platform could be in, uh, not operational at any one given time. But, well, right, but I mean, but how many? said that, it, I, is a, it is probably, it is one of the best aircraft in the inventory. The best aircraft in the inventory? Well, Mr. Secretary, uh, there's a GAO report that takes a very different view. Mr. Chairman, I seek unanimous consent to enter the GAO report entitled, F-35 sustainment cost will continue to rise while planned use and availability have decreased. Without objection, so ordered. It reads, costs to sustain the F-35 fleet keep increasing from $1.1 trillion in 2018 to $1.58 trillion in 2023. Yet DOD plans to fly the F-35 less than originally estimated, partly because of reliability issues with the aircraft. The F-35's ability to perform its mission has also trended downward over the last five years. Is there any of that in the GAO report that you disagree with? Uh, I don't, no. Okay, so how many hundred million dollar paperweights do we own? I would not categorize the F-35 as a paperweight. Well, if, we, if it's not mission capable, if it's, what, what, do we just stare at it and admire it? We, we continue to work to make sure that we, uh, we uh, get our aircraft uh, operational and continue to... Uh, and, and I don't know, don't you think at 100 million a clip, more than 29% should be fully operational? And if the fact that we can't get them operational, you know, you know what Secretary Kendall said when he was sitting in that chair? He said the core root of the problem is that we had let Lockheed Martin build this thing, and then we gave Lockheed Martin the full system performance contract. And they keep bilking us, according to the GAO, and we sit around staring at a $100 million airplane that can't fully perform the mission, and you're sitting here telling me it's, a, it's not a failure. Just own up to it, Mr. Secretary. Just say, this airframe has not delivered. It's too costly. It's not, it's not being utilized as we should, and we should never again make the mistake of doing a full system performance contract with the very person who built the aircraft. 
Can we agree to that? I agree. In the future, okay. we should take a, we should have a different approach. I'm sure that Secretary Kendall well, also told you. I think you the committee is going to things that he was doing to get the approach quite quickly. Yeah. Gentlemen's time's expired. Let me uh, give people 